Hello guys, Kudlis here, and this video is going to be a little bit different. It's still about Demon Souls, so you want to watch this in between episodes 16 and 17 in my Let's Play. Uh, but this video is all about world tendencies. I think I've talked about it a little bit during the, the gameplay of Demon Souls already in the Let's Play, and I've also done one important uh, world tendency during my gameplay when I got the Dragon Bone Smasher before the, the Dragon God boss. One thing to note, however, is that this video will contain spoilers for uh, the previous 16 episodes of my Let's Play. That means uh, for all the areas up to uh, <laughs> Boletarian Palace uh, 1, 3, I guess. So, let's talk about the world tendencies and get to the point here. Uh, there are white tendencies and black tendencies, and they act on like a spectrum from pure black to pure white. As you can see, uh, you start the game at neutral if you start the game offline and you move towards white and towards black, depending on the actions you do. Uh, if you start the game in online mode, then the world tendencies will be aff <laughs> affected by the general world tendencies in every player's world. So generally, the worlds tend to be uh, white when you are playing online, because most people don't really go towards the black tendencies in their, in their gameplay, because it's a lot more difficult to go to black than it go is to go to white. Now, the world tendencies in it themselves have some effects on the gameplay in itself. Uh, white world tendency, for example, decreases enemy HP, attack power and defense power, enemies drop fewer upgrade stones, enemies drop more healing items, and attack power is increased when you are in soul form by 10 and 20% if you are in pure white. So the game gets considerably easier once you are in white. Uh, especially because the, the, the black tendencies make the game harder uh, by doing the opposite. Uh, so the black world tendency events have the following effects. They increase enemy HP, attack and defense power, so the opposite of the white world tendency. Enemies hold more souls, so you can farm souls more easily in, on the black world tendency. Uh, they're more likely to drop rare items. Black phantoms, a version of enemies, and NPCs will appear. Now most of the, the Black World Tendency events uh, involve these Black Phantoms, which are evil versions of the NPCs we meet in the game, for example, or enemies uh, we fought already. And these Black Phantoms are super, super dangerous, so you want to be careful with those. Primeval Demons as well spawn, and these are one-kill bosses per each area of the game. You can spawn one Primeval Demon in each uh, in each of the Arc Stones. Not the really Arc Stones, but each of the worlds, I guess. And these drop a, um, a certain item, a color the Demonless Soul that you can use to upgrade, for example, the Dragon Bone Smasher, which is uh, awesome, for the rare weapons. And they will spawn on minus two, which is the, uh, the, the tendency that is almost pure black. And additionally, the last thing is that the, uh, the HP maximum in soul form is reduced, so that's the last black world tendency. This video will mainly focus on the white tendency. I'll show you the white tendency events and talk about the one that we missed in, uh, in my playthrough. I'm going to show you all of the, the White World events uh, as we go along in the video. Before we do that, I need to talk about how to get to White World Tenancy. Uh, you can get to White by killing a boss. It will move you one increment up on the World Tendency spectrum. Uh, if you kill the Red Dragon or the Blue Dragon, you also get plus one, but these are only available in 1, 2, and 1, 4. You can kill one of the uh, named Pure Black World Tendency NPCs. They spawn when you uh, basically go down to Pure Black Tendency. These are Pure Black Tendency events. Uh, so you can kill an NPC that spawn in the Black World Tendency world, and then you'll be back up at neutral if you kill the enemies there. Uh, you can also kill the, the Primeval Demon to get you back up uh, one time, and there is also the Invading Black Phantoms, which are other players that invade your world. They will get your your uh, your tendency up towards the white, but mostly you can do uh, go to pure white simply by killing bosses. Now to go towards black, things are a little bit different, and you might remember that I've killed myself a lot in my Let's Play in the Nexus. That's because if you die outside the Nexus, in a world for example, in body form, after you, you gain body form by using a Stone of Ephemeral Eyes or by killing a boss, you will lose a world tendency in the world you die. So that's one way to proceed towards black. You can also kill old King Doran. Hmm, who's old King Doran? Maybe we'll kill him in another episode. We'll see. Um, you can kill the body form of one of five special NPCs as well. And the body forms are the NPCs we have already seen uh, in the game. But these are basically the, the good versions of those NPC characters. Now, first off, I'm going to show you one white world tendency event and then a black world tendency event in the Shrine of Storm. 
storms. Uh, this Shrine of Storm event is in 4-1. It involves Satsuki and a sword named Makoto, which we found in the another previous episode uh, of the game. Satsuki is an NPC we'll find if we attain the uh, <laughs> pure white world tendency in Shrine of Storms. And I'm going to show you the event that starts this whole thing. So we go to the Shrine of Storms. And once we are there at the Arkstone, something will happen. As you can see, across the little entrance here, to the right, we have next to the skeleton, an NPC. And he will only spawn if you are at plus three on, this, <laughs> uh, on <laughs> the world tendency towards white. Come here. Let's try to I have a proposal for you. Do not be afraid. You have much to gain. I am Satsuki. I seek a keepsake of my father. Have you seen the sword inscribed? Makoto, I will offer you demon souls if you can help me find it. Don't trust this guy. If you give him Makoto, he will attack you. If you decide to uh, equip the Makoto, he will attack you. Or if you say no to him, he'll also attack you. So yeah, pretty nice guy this guy. If you kill him, we'll move three increments towards Black World Tendency. Um, so we are... Uh, either way, we're going to talk to him, and we're not going to give him the Makoto in this instance. Let's take a look at what happens if we don't. Ah, bless your good now. Just hand the Makoto over to me. What on earth is wrong with you? How dare you waste my precious time? Do you not want demon souls? Fine. Have it your way. A duel will settle it. And now he'll attack us. And he is pretty ferocious. Uh, he currently wields, wields the... Uh, the hiltless blade. Which will damage us if we take it from him. Uh, but the Makoto is known for one-shotting enemies, basically. Uh, but he's fairly simple in pure White World Tendency. Remember, we have increased damage and NPC and increased health in Soul Form as well, even though we are in Human Form currently. As you can see, our World Tendency is pure White. Once we return to the Nexus, there will be a change, because the the change in World Tendency only appears once you go back to the Nexus and then enter World. So can, as you can see, the World Tendency is neutral as of this moment. It's at zero basically. Now to reduce the world tendency in the Shrine of Storms, we're going to use a Stone of Ephemeral Eyes to reattain our body form. And then we are going to suicide, so we'll die within body form in Shrine of Storms. This will move us to minus one, if we do it one time. I'm going to show you how, uh, basically I'm just going to... I should probably just remove all my, my equipment so it doesn't get damaged to save some souls, but I really didn't care at this point. So I'm just going to forward here. And I put up a counter there to the right to show you what world tendency we are currently in. So as of right now, we are... we've died in body form in Shred of Storms. This will make us move towards minus one world tendency. However, this won't really change until we leave. But if we continue to die before leaving, uh, all of the uh, all of the world tendency changes will occur once we enter and go back to the Nexus. As you can see, it's still at neutral. Uh, but once we return to the Nexus, the, the changes will, will appear. So yeah, I'm gonna suicide here once more, just gonna speed up this. And now we are at minus two. And at this point, a primordial or primordial demon will spawn, a primeval demon, I think, will spawn in the world. So we can go kill that, but that will make us go back to plus one world tendency because it gives us three additional points. So now we are at minus three. And this is pure black world tendency. So now I think it's about time we go back to the Nexus and look at how the Archstone changes. I just wanted to regain my souls there for a second. Now I wanted to regain my souls, and as you can see it's at minus three now, so it's almost pure black. If you check uh, the changes here in the Nexus, you can see it's, it's one away from the pure black world tendency at minus four. We are currently at minus three now, so I guess this is when the prim primeval demon spawns. Just correcting myself there, uh, because there are four black tendencies and there are three white ones. Uh, but yeah, now we need to die once more, and as you can see, I'm just, I was just proving the point that uh, the changes won't happen until you go back to the Nexus, but they, the, they are bundled together. And now it's pure Black World Tendency in the Shrine of Storms. So once we go back there now, uh, the pure Black World Tendency will, event will happen. As you can see, Harry Satsuki is back, and he's in pure 
Ooh, yeah, look at that damage right there, guys. Yeah, that's the Black Phantom Sasuke, and uh, in addition to the increased damage uh, of the Pure Black World Tendency, this guy hits for a lot of damage. So yeah, the Pure Black Tendency World Event's pretty hard. Uh, but uh, a strategy against this guy, I'm just gonna fast forward through the fight here just to show you uh, for the sake of the let's play. As you can see, it almost took me down even when I used the shield there. And he got me twice. And he will also use a heal, but remember, he's fairly easily stun locked, especially with this Dragon Bone Smash right wield here. So just dodge behind him and backstab him if you can. Um, the, the backstab uh, range of this guy is a bit small, but yeah, just use a shield if you. If you, if you can. Uh, but be careful not to get hit by the blade because it's such a good blade. And also remember the, the damage increases of the Black World Phantoms is pretty humongous. And now, he, as you can see, he will heal up if you don't attack him furiously. And we also have a Bone Skeleton coming for us. So, ooh, hello, Boney. Uh, you gotta get rid of them as that as well. But uh, yeah, uh, we can go back here and backstep him. And you can also parry this guy if you're, if you're good enough. But it's really risky. Um, but yeah, uh, once we kill him, he'll drop something cool, I think, and also, oh, uh, he'll drop a lot of souls, because remember, the Black World Tendency of events uh, increase, uh, or the Black World Tendency increases uh, the amount of souls we get. Uh, but he has a lot of HP. Remember, this weapon here is super strong, and uh, there we go, backstab, oh yeah. Um, and we are heavily armored with with the certs with certs armor from the from the let's play. Oops, almost messed up there. That was too close. Ah, uh, but yeah, um, Satsuki, pretty hard fight. But uh, in this video, this is the only Black World Tendency event I will show you because uh, they are uh, pretty similar to this one. They only uh, involve other NPCs uh, instead of Satsuki. Uh, but as you can see. Uh, once you kill him there, he will drop the uh, the Hiltless, which is the weapon he wields. And it's a weapon that deals damage to you when you deal damage to enemies. It's because you, it doesn't have a hilt, basically. You're holding the blade in your hands. Pretty cool weapon, though. Uh, so there are other world black tendencies, but this was the one I decided to show you guys um, as an example. Uh, next off, we are going to do the white world tendencies in the other worlds. So I'm going to show you all of them except for the Valley of Defilement because I messed that up if you watch my Let's Play. Ugh, that was terrible. Uh, but yeah, I'll mention that in the end as well. Uh, so in the Bolotarian Palace, there is a door to the left of the starting entrance that will be unlocked once you reach pure white or pure black world tendency. Either one is fine. And once you unlock the door, it will stay unlocked even though you change the world tendency to something else. So it will stay open. And in there you'll find something pretty cool. Uh, let's go inside and take a look. So we are back here at the entrance with the arc stone, and down here the pathway has opened, as you can see. And at the end here we'll find some some uh, some some <laughs> phantom versions of enemies we've already defeated. We'll also find some loot and um, an NPC at the end. I just checked there, but there was there was nothing over there. Uh, but yeah, uh, when you loot these enemies, some of these guys will spawn, and these are basically red phantom hollows, and they uh, or draglings, I guess, in this game, not dark souls, and uh, they will deal a lot of damage. So a lot of souls and uh, crescents down here, but not really anything of a pure importance. But up here to the to ooh, some more enemies spawn right there. Uh, but this is pure white world tendency, by the way, so they die fairly easily. Um, but to the right here, there is an NPC down in the uh, down in the. Uh, the house. I just had to get rid of some items to pick up some of this stuff because it's fairly heavy, as you can see. Uh, but yeah, down here, next to this rafter here with the ravens, uh, there is a, a building over there with a bridge, or not a bridge, but a, but a, but a staircase. Yeah. So we got to go down into this house, and to the left there, oh, or to the right there is uh, Miralda, the executioner. And you might have seen her in some of the Dark Souls or Demon Souls, uh, Demon Souls. Um, loading screens and she drops her armor the binded cross and um, there is also another item down here to the right which you can jump down to a uh, primeval demon I think down here to the right on some of the rafters or at least something of that extent uh, not really showing that you can check that out once you unlock this this door here but you get the binded cross um, and uh, it's worn by the executioner of Boletaria and I decided to jump down just to get back out Yay! Our death is fun. And the uh, let's go to the uh, the armor spider art stone because there is an event with Skurver the Thunderer, and he shows up uh, 
this is involved with a Dragon Bone Smasher, by the way, which we got uh, in the previous episode, which was a pure world, world white world tendency event, uh, which you have, uh, you get the Dragon Bone Smasher if you have pure white world tendency event before you go to the old god, old dragon boss, or the, the god dragon boss, yeah. Uh, but this event involves Scurvy the Wanderer, and he is at the place where we jumped down to the Flame Lurker boss. And uh, you get to jump down to him, and if you have... Uh, Pure White World Tendency, he will spawn there, and if you have the Dragon Bone Smasher as well, he will give you a gift, basically. And you can also kill him if you want to, and reduce the World Tendency to, to neutral. Um, and he will drop a Ronin Ring if you do, but I'm not gonna kill him because I don't want to do any more Black World Tendency events in this playthrough. So, as you can see, I'm following this Crystal Lizard over here into the cave. Just gonna show you this in case you haven't... In case you forgot the, the path I took to Flame Lurker. Uh, but you roll through the, some crates here and you jump down to to the left first. And then, oh, to the right. Uh, oh, I guess, no. Uh, straight forward. And then you roll down here and inside this little little tunnel here, here is Skurver! He gets! Oh, oh, you nearly f f frightened me to death, creeping up on me like that. My name is Skurver. I s s seek treasures of the unknown. I'm impressed you've come this far. Were you... Guided by a sixth sense or a brash improvement. Let us put that. There is a temple beyond. It is a work of art, molded by the ancient burrowers to appease the bones of, of dragons. As a precaution, a broad sword which can cr crush bone and slay dragon is stored in the temple. Truth told, it is the laughing stock of many a swordsmith. They say it's as blunt as a bludgeon. A d dull blade. Meant to slay a dragon. C curious, is it not? I would search for it myself, but I I'm afraid I'd fare poorly against the demons. If you happen to come upon the sword, please let me have a look at it. This place is magnificent, eh? The bones of dragons exuding awe. A dream come true. Wonderful. The arts of swordsmanship applied in a perfectly useless manner. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. Oh, do not mind me. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Please, take this as a small show of thanks. Take care of that sword, will you? She's a beauty. And th we got the pure greystone. It's an upgrade material, which weighs... 10 pounds, I guess, in this game. It's super heavy. Let's move on to the Tower of Latria. This uh, World Tennis event involves rescuing Lord Ridiel. And he can be released if you attain Pure White World Tennis event. And that will spawn a key up at the place where we cut the first chain to the heart up in the second part of the Tower of Latria, I guess. And you will be able to release Ridiel and you will... Also be able to unlock different, uh, different, I guess, cages in the second floor area of, of the prison in the Tower of Latria, first part. So, um, the first thing you want to do with this event is you want to go to the Arkstone of the Fool's Idol. Then you proceed to the, the right uh, at the first crossing. Uh, be aware of the gargoyles on the way, of course, and the, the man-eating centipedes. And then we'll go up to uh, the top of this, uh, the place that was sealed off by the heart. And we'll cross over this path here and up into the first tower. And then at the top, oh, you've got to dodge those enemies there. Uh, and after you take the elevator up to the top, oh, I think, yeah, there's an elevator here. And once you've done that, there will be um, a little bridge that has been set up here at the top as you can see and you can cross this bridge and you'll be able to uh, find a key uh, which leads to the second floor of the prison keys I guess this is like the sixth key we've gotten in this fucking prison uh, but the prison of hope key uh, second floor so we to get to the prison floor I'm starting at the the original original arc stone there to to the tower of latria and I move up here to the left outside killing these these prison guards Almost get killed there. Uh, well, not really killed, but oh well. And then you make your way to the left at this first first uh, first path, and then you make your way all the way. I mistake there, by the way. You're gonna make your way all the way down to the bottom of this place, and then you go to the, straight forward, I guess, before you really go down to the to the to the entire bottom. Gotta be careful with that guy though. He hits pretty hard. 
But now we are at the correct place at here. You can hear Lord Ridiel. And you can also see some loot over there. You can open all of these these cages now. Oh, why, thank you. Please, take this fine piece of work. Besides, I have no use for it now. Oh, and thus begins my... F we got the dull rat's ring, which is a um, companion ring to the other rat ring we have. Uh, it's a simple gold ring engraved with the seal of a small animal increases defense when HP is below 30%. And it's a companion to the clever rat's ring, which increases uh, attack power when below 30%. Uh, we can also find some, some souls and some simple items in this cage. As many enemies in that one, and in here we'll find a three-cornered hat. Pretty cool hat. And in this one, we'll find Ridiel's last gear, the Sage Hood of... Oh, I guess Sage Freak's gear. It's in here instead. You can get that set right there if you want to. Uh, now, the event I haven't completed because I mess up the world tendency in, in Valley of Defilement. But there are some events here that you can uh, to, you can attain by by getting to f pure white world tendency, and there will be a first of all there will be like a ladder at the start, uh, which you can move towards a super spear at the beginning of of the the first entrance. Uh, after the Leechmonger Archstone as well, Selen of Inland, the sister of Garl of Inland, will appear on a tiny island uh, after the first fog gate, and you can talk to her, and you start a side quest there, and. Um, you can give her uh, the crest of Vinland uh, if you if you if you attained uh, that from from Garl, and um, if you do, she will basically yeah give you give you a ring I think, and you can kill her as well, and she will drop a lot of a lot of gear and the the ring she would have given you if you decided to give her the crest of Vinland. Crest of Vinland. I'm using the crest of Vinland by the way. It's a super nice super nice shield. Um, also, at the Col Dirty Colossus uh, Arc Zone, there will be a Black Phantom version of Garl of Vinland. And he only appears if you killed Maiden Astraea and collected her, her stone, or her demon demon's soul. And he will drop Brand and the Crest of Vinland, which is useful for giving that to Selen Vinland. So, yeah, that's nice. Bram, this is huge as mace, by the way. So yeah, those are the World Tendency events of Demon Souls. I hope you enjoyed this video. I decided not to show any more of the Black World Tendency events because they are all fairly similar to the one we did with Satsuki. Uh, they basically involve you going back to the place where you found the NPC as a good guy and fight him as a Black Phantom, fight him or her, I guess. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and check out the, let the rest of my Let's Play uh, and the other th videos I have on my channel as well. So subscribe and I'll see you guys in episode 17 of Dark Demon Souls. Almost the Dark Souls there. <laughs> Take care, guys. Until next time.